Hello, uh, this is Michael. This week uh, I'm specifically trying to talk about wireframes and I think through our journey we've been able to create higher and higher levels of detail and wireframes for the information architect may be that final level of detail. This is where you could present this to almost anyone and have them understand and to uh, gather feedback on your approach. Uh, this is not, however, considered final design. It's really, uh, I often think of wireframes as being sketches. Uh, they're just neater. And in fact, uh, it has been in, in my, many of my earlier classes fine to uh, draw this out with pencil and paper and submit it. And I, I certainly have no problem with that. Although in this demonstration, I'm going to show you some higher fidelity ways of working. So for one, uh, the deliverable as it goes is to take the uh, initial uh, flow and or uh, site map and to illustrate that, make that kind of the overall guide to what you're going to show me next. So in this case, I have just an example here using this sort of low fidelity idea that uh, this page will begin with a video. Someone then clicks to go to these different five different spots, these five different spots indicate different areas. It's kind of an overall map at a very, very high level of what you tend, you want to illustrate next with some representative yeah, I ideas. Out, uh, I will show you that this uh, and its confusing uh, lines and arrows was actually meant to uh, represent the existing site where people were going all over the place. My uh, point was to try to rearrange that and make it one long page that then spread out into different situations so that you could scroll through, see some of the information, and not have to rely so heavily on an overall navigation style, which I also felt, uh, if I was to represent it later in a mobile journey, that then we could simplify it even and show, say, instead of just a map of, of the US, we could show your personal location. So these are all there to uh, kind of guide and tell stories, but there's enough fidelity to kind of figure out that, for example, this is a form, this is a map, uh, there's some personalization here, there's some ideas about how you get from one place to the other. So the overall navigation uh, could be represented here, that kind of site map that we've been working on, or if you're doing any of the other patterns that we've discussed, you can do it in this manner too, but it's very low fidelity. In fact, as I said, this could just be a sketch if you wish to, but it should begin your, uh, be the first page or something to orient me as to what you're trying to show me in more detail later. Let me show you a couple of quick examples of wireframes. These might be a little bit uh, high, higher fidelity than I'm expecting, uh, but I do think that the goals might be easier to see. For one, <coughs> this one is using a little bit more color and has a lot more text, but I was working with the uh, marketing uh, group to create a lot of this text. And in, in your situations, most of this uh, text would come from your database anyway. But what is important is the overall navigation. You can log in. There's some uh, activities that you can do, such as in this case, you would say, get your free brand score. That would click and go here and create this sort of overarching navigation that you need to choose an, object, uh, an objective. Um, that you'd have three choices and that I could tell from, I guess, that this orange box over here is something I could do. This orange box is, again, something I can select. Uh, I would select one of these, for example, reach. And then it would say something like, to compute your reach, we need to do something else like connect to uh, different uh, areas and each of these would have its own flow. So the idea would be more about showing storytelling and especially guiding me uh, through the words and the actions that people would do to get to that place. So it's, it's telling a story about how people navigate the information that you're showing. You will also want to mark up your data and I have another example of that. Um, Again, this might have a little more fidelity than, than you might need, but it's showing uh, different records and how those records are shown one after the other. And the things that you can do to these records, kind of showing the overall hierarchy that in this case, there's a name, there's a goal, there's an author, uh, it's part of a particular university, and there's something like these ideas around when it was done and how many people have seen it. 
And as you go from record to record, you can see that I deliberately change these things, although they stay in the same place and they show uh, the same sort of information. But this gets us the idea of how do we go from one record to the other. Also, in this case, you might see a little cut off, but there might not be three aims for every particular one. I want to show the variations, or in this case, one is a little bit longer than the other. How does somebody then uh, view that? And that might be, you know, that they click on it and it would open up uh, some sort of a box to show you all the details. And so this should go pretty much hand in hand with the thoughts that you put toward your HTML. You've already thought about sections and how things are grouped. You can also see I've added a kind of a taxonomy here, which is the idea that you could select this and see just things around that particular grouping. And, uh, and this is where I display that. I've also got these idea that, that there's maybe a summary or a download area as well. So uh, then I say, well, what happens if you search? Well, if you search, then this is what you'll see. You know, maybe uh, highlighting this term, CD44, etc. And I might take you through a couple other scenarios looking for different databases or and how that would show up. And so that's really the goal of the wireframes, again, is to tell a story, to also use um, markup uh, or use a, a little bit of design to show how your data is going to be displayed on the screen. So let me just show you how to use this program sketch in order to create a wireframe. Um, many things like even Microsoft Paint or um, I would say uh, some of the online tools that I'm sharing uh, have varying levels of sophistication, but I don't want that to be the goal of this. The goal is to tell a story of how people use your data and how they get something out of it. Uh, if it's done on a piece of paper uh, and done as stills in a uh, PowerPoint deck, you know, that you say here, they start here, they go there, they go there. That's the most important thing to a wireframe, to tell a general story of how things work to a general audience. And people should be able to understand what you're talking about. Oftentimes, things like sitemaps and, and flows are, are a little hard for people to understand, but most people can understand pictures in a story. So let's create a picture and a story. Uh, in this case, this is the way this tool does it. You create artboards. Uh, artboards are just ways to kind of organize things. I'm going to go ahead and just do an iPhone here. Now, uh, we've got a data structure, and if we, I'm just going to take one as an example. Uh, I'm going to be able to draw shapes, and the, the shapes are pretty um, basic, but they're um, things like rectangles. So let's just draw some rectangles. So let's say that our overall page, for example, has a nav. And uh, in this case, there's a thing called a, a style. So we can create a style and we can call it nav. So, uh, so far, so good. Now we can create another uh, rectangle and we can say that this is a, um, let's see, what was another good one? A section. Okay, so now we've got something and we're going to create a style called section. And uh, we add other things like a sides. Um, pretend this is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we can do something more important than that. We can say here is a uh, article. And uh, in that article, we've got an aside. So uh, now that articles and asides are there, we can just copy and paste them and, and so forth. And what makes it nice is that if I had more than one uh, area, uh, like for example, if I had another artboard, we can just go ahead and put another one. Uh, let's add more from my artboard. Oh, there we go. Here's another artboard. If I wanted to draw a rectangle, here's our rectangle. I can go ahead and assign it that it's a section. Now, they all look exactly the same, so that's not exciting. But if I went over here and said, well, let's say uh, articles, uh, they all have a uh, white fill. And asides uh, don't have a line. They are going to have a blue fill. Uh, again, not trying to get too much into colors, but let's just say uh, yes. Now, if I had not called this a section, but called it an article, it would um, reflect the style that I have shown. I am sorry that I do have to actually refresh it. 
to make it do that. Uh, yeah, so same thing here. If I refresh it, all, everything here turns blue. And if I had a rectangle here. So it's really about repetition, and uh, this actually comes in pretty handy when it comes to um, moving into development. Even though you've shown them some examples of your HTML, this helps you reuse structures. So those are sort of bo uh, body structures. Let's get into text structures. As you might remember, we've got things like headers. So a text style could be header one. And in this case, it could be, uh, that looks pretty good. So we'll do another text style here and we'll call it uh, header two. And guess what? Uh, we're gonna do another text style and we're gonna call it header, call it header three. Awesome, now the thing is you might have to do a little bit of design. What makes header one look different from header three or is that even important? Well, uh, let's say for example, header two, it's just as important, but perhaps a little less so that we're going to say, eh, well, maybe the color is more like a gray than it is gonna be a black. So now we've differentiated them and some of our gestalt rules have come into play. Uh, maybe number three is uh, also going to be gray and uh, for whatever reason, uh, we're also gonna lower the, the font size. So now we have our three uh, type primitives. Now we wanna connect it to some data. So I'm just gonna say, uh, this is where things get a little bit complicated. If you want to, just look at your database and type it in. That's how I did the example I just showed. So you don't have to do this, and if you're in another program, the thing that I'm about to show you cannot do in any other program. But it's neat, so I'm going to show it to you. Uh, what it involves is this thing called the Craft plugin. And the Craft plugin has a, a place where you can uh, put in fake data. For example, uh, this goes and it puts in data that it picks out of um, uh, different services that allow you to get this kind of data. So if I was to put this on one, uh, and put it on another one, uh, let's put it down here. Uh, we can just go ahead and, you know, it would just come up with random names, which is kind of fun and, and makes things a, look a, bit, a little bit better. We don't need randomness. We already have a data set that we're gonna use and everything else that we're gonna show, such as navigation, is things that we're gonna make up. So this isn't that helpful to us, but it's kind of cool. But what they have done is to say, I can go to and use JSON. So JSON is just a way to take a format, your data format that you took, uh, that you put as CSVs and put it into a different format uh, that the web likes a little bit better. How do you do that? Well, you can go to a converter. Uh, uh, we we'll take it CSV to JSON. And all that's necessary, there's quite a few of these. Uh, here's a an example here, uh, and you just convert it to JSON. Uh, the only trick about this is that uh, you will want this not to be formatted. So uh, because this does like a file, um, you may wish to, um, it, it gets a little tricky to do the file in, in this one. Let me just try a different service, hold on just a second. So this one um, doesn't allow you to download your file directly. So let me try a different one. Yeah, here we go. So in this case, we can download it. And now this is usable uh, for from any service. You just click Save, and you call it My Data with JSON as the end. So I did that with this uh, wide stripes example, and so let me go ahead and use it. So right now I'm going to import it uh, into this. So it'll look like this. It'll have a number for every one of the examples. And in this case, uh, so instead of this, we're going to call it album. We're going to click on this button and call it year, and this one we're going to say chart position. For this example. 
So now we've got this element here. It's got an aside. It's got uh, three pieces of data. One of those pieces of data is empty. So I'm just going to group it together, and we're going to call it record. And the fun comes with duplicating it. So if I want to, if I duplicate it and I have uh, five in a row, it will go through and voila, it will go through each one of my records and put the data in the right place. So while well, I said this is just a nice to have, what I think it does illustrate is that the work that you've done, taking data, marking it up, moving it forward can actually be used in the wireframe rather than starting from scratch and just looking at the data, you've actually built a whole rationale for being able to display your data in this manner. Now, uh, like I said, this isn't necessary, but it is kind of your end product would look like this. Uh, what's fun is that if you make a mistake, you can uh, undo this and move some things around and so forth. So it just makes it a little bit easier to work with data. So hope that was helpful. Look forward to your results. We'll uh, also make sure to have uh, some more tutorials as we go forward. Thanks.